Are you really here? Are you really here? If you are here, just try to show yourself. There are so many ghosts in this building, it would take us about half an hour to talk about each and every one of them. Now, they don't just like to confine themselves to one room. They like to wander freely throughout the whole of the castle, and you never know when you might bump into one. It's hard to believe that this room used to be a chapel. Now, 39 people were massacred here, and over in the corner is a small dungeon. It's also known as an oubliette, where hundreds of people lost their lives. In the 1930s, workmen discovered three cartloads of human bones. And many people have seen the ghost of an old man desperately trying to climb out. The ghosts of two little girls have often been seen playing in this particular room on the first floor. They've been given names Charlotte and Emily. Now, Emily died when she fell from the battlements from the top of the tower. And ever since then, Charlotte has been seen running after her sister and calling out her name. Whilst we all waited for our spiritualist medium, Derek Akora, to arrive, some of us were starting to experience some strange phenomena. This has been taking photographs all day, and the battery is fully charged, the lithium battery can recharge and it's gone dead. I've just been taking photographs, which I just showed you, and it's gone dead. And it always gives you a warning light that it's going to go, like, a few minutes before it's going to go, and it's just completely dead now. I was just there chatting with Carl and Stuart, just a normal conversation, and something's just whispered in my ear, and just, you couldn't make out what it was, it was just like, <sighs> oh, God. in my ear, and I was just sort of... Are you right in your ear? Absolutely sure. 120% sure. positive. How does that make you feel? Nervous, but excited at the same time. <laughs> hey, there is actually quite a high electromagnetic fluctuation here. Of oh, look at 15 that. milligauss. Get that, wow. 15 milligauss. Oh, it's less now, 5 milligauss. See, that's changed, 10 milligauss. Now, the only explanation for that would be if it was under the ground. You can see that it's gone back down to 4, so it's not caused by something under the flagstones, if there was anything in an ancient castle. Um, do you want to try it? <laughs> Are you scared? <laughs> no, I just think it's What's amazing. It I've never seen um, such a radical reaction as that before. Basically, what that's showing is that there is an electromagnetic fluctuation of the natural electromagnetic field in this area. Now, you can see it's gone back down to zero now, nothing at all. Tension was definitely mounting, and then Angle reported a possible encounter with the nanny. I stood outside and somebody tapped me on my arm and I thought it was somebody else, but there's nobody around me. I think this castle has an enormous paranormal application. What it does, it's in every ghost book that's ever been published. And in that sense, it's got an awful lot to live up to. The one thing that's interested me so far is that Angle feels that something touched her and there was no one near at the time. And at that point, none of us knew what Sean has since told us, that one of the ghosts is attracted or likes to interfere with people with blonde hair, which has bleached hair. Does that intrigue you? After hearing all the ghost stories throughout the day and knowing of the history of murders, our adrenaline was pumping and expectations were high. Surely we would experience something paranormal at Lep Castle. in for the night and I have the keys and I'm going to hide them so if anybody wants to escape you can't <laughs> right should we get going yes yeah. please. where do you want to go Derek I'd like to go up those stairs of that Jason okay right, okay let's go as we climbed the stairs, Derek was picking up the presence of a woman who was standing on the balcony in the gallery room. Little did he know he was about to experience something beyond his understanding. There's a figure of a person I couldn't see quite clearly and has moved over towards the chair. This is a very, or she appears to be, from this angle, for a lady quite tall. 
she's wearing this very free-flowing, very uh, bright red gown dress. Now, the, what I can't understand, her uh, face changed this ugly, um, grotesque-looking face. And it, it say, her face was taken away. What I'd like to do with it, mm. Jason, is that I'd like to go up there yeah. onto that area because her essence is still there, but she's not showing herself now. Is it how many people can get up there, Carl? What's the floor like? Um, I mean, the floor seems fine. Um, yeah, I mean, three of you can get up there, perhaps one of the cameras. Here she is again. She's coming to the back. Come on, Sam, encourage her. Encourage her. That's the way. She's doing it again to me. Give me it then. Give it to me. Did, was, did you hit my hand? Did you hit my hand? Okay. She's playing with me, this lady. She's playing with me. Earlier on, Derek had a can of drink in his hand when we went on camera, and it was the weirdest thing. The can that it was the can just flew out of his hand. And Derek was saying that somebody had, had hit him on the wrist. A good. hand! A hand has gone up. Look at it shimmering! Oh! I can see through the conditions. This is interdimensional. This is not just spirit. Look at that. Oh! She's changing shape. She's changing shape, Yvette. What does that mean? Interdimensional. We must, Yvette, can we go up to yeah, this yeah. area? Oh. We must go up here. I'm very close. Right. We get the transference from the lady in the red, and she learned the black arts to change her conditions to this. Show yourself. Show yourself. Oh, there it is. Look at it. Now, I would describe what I'm actually experiencing and seeing here. It's not animal. Be careful, please. Off camera, you can hear the owner, Sean, who was becoming nervous as Derek was describing the elemental ghost. Be careful, please. How do I say this? How can I continue with this condition that if I can't speak? Bless you. How do I say it, Sam? How do I say it? The man lives here. I don't know how I can continue this. Sean was purely concerned for Derek and felt the need to warn him about this particular spirit, but was eager for us to continue. Go on. I would never, ever, to this present day, in all my work, of what I have believed up to this moment, what I'm actually experiencing now of it. This dual soul could transfer and shape, shift. So she is changing into this, this yes. thing. Yes. And there's also Sir Henry. Sir Henry. Sir Henry Darby. Shall we move away from here? I need to speak, guys. I know when I've got battery problems and when a battery's going flat, and your battery's not going flat, but something unplugged it, something completely cut out your radio mic and then put it back on. There's no, been no interference all day long, mm. and it sounds... It's on tape. Oh, my God. It's basically mm. been cut out and then cut back in. From my radio mic? Yep. Right, that is solid in there. Right. And if I do... That, then you, you'll hear it on the tape, it go, it'll go pchum. And if I do that, it'll go pchum. If the battery's going flat, it completely distorts, and I'd know that. Well, you put a brand one in anyway. That's, that's in there. Solid. This is what Martin heard when my radio mic cut out. There is no explanation why the sound should break up, and it left us baffled as to how it could have happened. In the bloody chapel, Derek was picking up on murder, but whose? Now, I'll just have a look here. Oh, he's in there. Who's in there? Right, there's a, a hooded man, a, a monk. And he doesn't want us in there, you see. 